Hi everyone, it's Agnes Vivarelli. Welcome to another wonderful interview. This is with Shelley Lefko today. She's from the Lefko Institute and her thing is working on people's beliefs. So I've called Shelly in because so many of you on my channel say, and yes, how do you change beliefs? How do you change beliefs? How do you change beliefs? I've given you the bit I can, but Shelly, this is her lifetime's work with her husband, Morty, who is no longer with us uh, as of two years ago, but Shelly is continuing on and doing the work. So I'm going to let her share whatever she wants to tell you about changing beliefs. Welcome, Shelly. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So um, you're not going to ask me questions. I'm just. Gonna... I can. Yes, I can start by asking you questions. People are always asking me. I've got the belief that I'm not good enough, or that in the most of the people that come to my channel come for relationships, and they are always asking, "How do I attract a, a great relationship?" Or I've got a specific person that's an ex that I'd like to talk to and bring back into my life. It's not working. My beliefs are such as I'm not good enough, I'm not wanted, I'm not a priority, I don't matter, I'm not important, I'm second best, which is a really big one. And those are the beliefs that people just keep getting snagged on. So Great. Can you shed some light on that? I sure can. So I'll actually back up because very rarely do I get this kind of latitude, so this is really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, the first thing is, um, that underlying all of our unwanted behaviors from relationship issues to, um, procrastination to, um, not going for it in life to allowing yourself to be ignored or mistreated, uh, to not asking for what you want, um, to, fear of public speaking, depression. So underlying every one of these problems or patterns that we have are these beliefs, most of which are unconscious. We don't even know that we have them. Now, you say people come and say, I have the belief I'm not good enough. That's mm -hmm. not um, generally the way it is. So you must have very conscious listeners. Um, Mostly people don't know what they believe. So they come to me, we have a session um, uh, where they buy one of our products and it helps you uncover what your beliefs are. Um, and the first way to do that is to, I'm going to give you all the goods today. I'm going to like, just because you're so amazing and I know you want to give this to your um, subscribers. So, um, so the first thing is, if you want to figure out what your belief is, just ask yourself the question, what must I believe to allow somebody to mistreat me? Mm. I mean, what would somebody have to believe? In order, if you believe I deserve to be treated well, I am good enough and I am important and I matter, you wouldn't do that. Mm. So it's almost logical. Um, and with self-esteem beliefs, it's pretty easy because everybody pretty much has the belief, I'm not good enough, I'm not important. Those are the two big ones. Um, uh, if you're procrastinating, it's probably because you're afraid to make a mistake or fail. Uh, and you have the belief mistakes and failures are bad, and if I make a mistake, I'll be rejected. Now, here's the thing. You may know that your beliefs are silly. Agnes, I have worked with Harvard PhDs five of them, who had the belief I'm stupid. So wow. they know they had a PhD from Harvard. How could they be stupid? So yeah. I've been doing this for 30 years. And over 30 years, I've heard the most outlandish, you know, I, I'm working with, currently working with an MD. You know, she's a doctor. Yeah. And she has the belief other people know better than me. So she mm. second guesses herself and doesn't trust herself. So the fact that you know something, we've all read business books that tell us mistakes and failures or learning opportunities. And yet, if you want to know if you have the belief, ask yourself, when I make a mistake or fail, do I go, yeah, way to go. That was a great learning opportunity. <laughs> no, you beat yourself up and you beat yourself yeah. up because you have that belief. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that's how you uncover a belief. Now you want to look for 
How do we get rid of the belief? So you want to look for um, the source of the belief. So let's assume you allow, um, uh, you always attract people who don't put your needs first you're in your relationships. You, you attract those kind of people. They just never consider your feelings or your wants and needs. And you probably have the belief, I'm not important. What I want is not important. What I feel is not important. Those are three different beliefs. We're going to start with I'm not important. Where did that belief come from? You go back to childhood and you look at what happened in childhood that would have had me feel that way. Mm. Well, my father worked all the time, never came home. Or when he did come home, he watched TV. He didn't interact with me. He didn't ask about my day. Mom was always cleaning and cooking or mom was working or mom was president of the whatever and she wasn't home or she didn't interact with me. Or, very common, I was one of four or more kids. Now, it's very hard for parents, particularly parents who don't know that it even matters, to give a child, give four or five or six or ten children your undivided attention. Mm. So kids conclude... I'm not important. Yes. Like I created this. <laughs> a little, ah, a little okay. My parenting uh, yep. course. And you don't have to do CDs there. It's streaming. But um, I don't want kids, I don't want this to get go down to one more generation. So yeah. I'm trying to stop these beliefs before they get formed. Yeah. Um, so now... If your parents criticize you all the time and say, and it could be lovingly and it could be, you know, um, where you get hit and screamed and yelled at, but a parent could say, oh, you got four A's and a B. Well, what's this B? Why didn't you get an all A's? Mm. You know, it could be as simple as that, you know, yeah. it could be, well, you scored a goal. That was great. But, you know, if you would have concentrated the whole game the way you did, you would have scored even more goals, yeah. you know, or what's wrong with you? You're running around the restaurant. Sit still. So the way in which our parents speak to us unintentionally mm. has leads to these beliefs. So they don't cause the beliefs. They don't form the beliefs. But you look at the situation. So every single child in the world asks three questions. Uh, sorry, wants three things. I have clients in every country now, Agnes. I have them in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And I say, what does your little kid want when they come home? Affection, attention, and acknowledgement. Yeah. Now, what's the one word question? Every little kid asks all day long in every country around the world. And they say, why? Why am I being criticized? Well, I guess I'm not good enough. Why am I being ignored? I guess I'm not important. Why do my parents not give me affection? Well, I guess I'm not lovable. Mm. Why do I get yelled at when I make mistakes and fail? Well, I guess mistakes and failures are bad. Why do they walk away angry? Well, I guess if I make a mistake or fail, I'll be rejected. Yeah. And here's the big one. This is the big one. Why is it that when my parents compare me, well, why, is it, why, why is it that they tell me, what are the neighbors going to think? You know, or you can't do this because what's this one going to think or that one going to think? Mm. And you grow up with the belief what makes me good enough is having other people think well of me which runs us mm. and it keeps us from being authentic. So that's how a belief gets formed. You go back to childhood and you look at where did the belief come from? Okay. Yeah. Then we take you through a process, which you're in right now. And you look at, well, what's another interpretation? So certainly you validate it and it made total sense for you to conclude that. But what else could it mean? What's another interpretation that would explain your parents' behavior? So yeah. for instance, it wasn't that I wasn't good enough. My parents had unrealistic expectations. Is that a valid interpretation? Yes. What's mm. another one? 
Well, it's not that I wasn't good enough. It's just that my parents didn't have very good parenting skills and they didn't know how to empower me. Great. What's another interpretation? Um, I wasn't good enough as a kid. It doesn't mean I'll never be good enough. Yeah. So you look at lots of interpretations and that kind of breaks up the belief. Mm. But then I say to people, and this is where our process is so powerful. Doesn't it seem like you could see I'm not good enough? Like you saw that. Like if we were watching a videotape of your childhood, you'd say, see, I'm not mm. good enough. Mm. And everybody says, yes, it does. I did see that. Yes. Now, you can't not believe something you think you saw. So I work with incest survivors. I work with people who've been raped, you know, date raped, raped, um, uh, sexually assaulted. And they all have the belief, well, no, most of them, I'm damaged goods. Uh. And I said, doesn't it seem like you saw that? I did see that. So yeah. let's go back to I'm not good enough. You can't not believe something you think you saw. So if I show you this, you'll say, oh, that's an iPhone. Now, in the old days, I would hold this up and I'd say, what do you see? And they'd say, an iPhone. And I'd say, you think this is an iPhone? They'd say, well, it is an iPhone. I'd say, yeah, look closer. It's an iPod Touch. It doesn't make phone calls. And they'd go, oh, oh, I never saw that it was an iPhone. I made that up. And just like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy, the belief goes away. So I then would say, doesn't it seem like you saw I'm not good enough? And then I say, did you ever see I'm not good enough? And they all say, first session, everybody says, well, yes, I did see it. And I say, really? And they say, yeah, there's me failing uh, math, or there's my father saying, you'll never amount to anything, or there's my mother saying, you know, what, what outfit did you put on? And, and I say, I can see all those things. Mm. But where is I'm not good enough? And they look at me and I say, you see this? Does it have a color, shape, and location? And they say, yes. And I say, so anything you could see has a color, shape, and location. Mm. Did you ever see I'm not good enough? Mm -mm. No. What did you see? I saw my mother yell at me and make me wrong, or I saw my father say, you should have gotten more goals or you should have gotten, you know, more A's. Mm. I saw them say, I'm disappointed in you, which by the way, never, ever, ever, ever say to your children, ever. Mm. So that's what you saw. And they go, uh-huh. And I say, so where was I'm not good enough? Yeah. I made that up. Mm. And then the belief goes, Phew. yeah. Now, some people are what we call kinesthetics or feelers. Yeah. So then I say, I make a distinction. So the distinction is consequences versus meaning. So the consequences of your parents' behavior were you might have not felt loved, you might have felt not good enough, you might have gotten punished. There are consequences to people's actions. But what meaning does it have? So I'm not good enough is a meaning. What does it really mean that they criticized you a lot? What meaning does that have? And then I make the point that meaning is in the mind. Mm. All meaning. So somebody cuts you off, oh, they're an idiot. Yeah. Somebody, um, uh, uh, your husband doesn't kiss you hello, he doesn't love me anymore. Your boss yeah. yells, they're going to fire me. So yeah. we give meaning all day long to events. 
meaning always comes from the mind. Mm. Events do not have inherent meaning. Another way of saying that is you don't know anything for sure because something happens. Yes. Even something tragic, like my husband died. I miss him every minute of every day. But it doesn't mean I'll never be happy again. I'll never get married again. I'm going to starve to death. I can't get my work. The events have no inherent meaning. Yes. So then I say, what does it really mean that your parents criticized you? And the answer is nothing. It has no meaning. Mm. I don't know if you grew up to be a serial killer or president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. CEO or a salesperson. Mm. Now, doesn't it seem like their behavior made you feel not good enough? And everybody says, it did yeah. make you feel that. It did. Mm. And then I ask the question, can events that have no meaning make you feel anything? No. So if somebody's walking down the street and you're walking down the street and a man walks past you and it has no meaning, what are you going to feel? Nothing. If you give it the meaning he's dangerous, what are you going to feel? Fear. If you give it the meaning he'll protect me, what are you going to feel? Safety. Perfect. Mm, mm. So events can't make you feel anything. Mm. It's the meaning you give them. Somebody's pointing a gun at you, you feel fear because you give it the meaning there's danger. Yes. If you if somebody points a toy gun at you, you don't feel fear because there's no you don't give it the yes. meaning. He's, this yeah. is you're gonna hurt me. Mm. Right? Mm. So events that events have no meaning and events that have no meaning can't make you feel anything. So yeah. what makes you feel not good enough? What you interpret about it. Mm. Meaning you give the events. Mm. Now, close your eyes and imagine giving the same events different meaning. Imagine you're a little kid thinking, parents have such unrealistic expectations of children. They don't excel at everything. Why, yes. should, why would they think I should? How yeah. would you, why would they expect a five-year-old to want to sit still in a restaurant? How yes. unrealistic. Yes, yes. So if you give the same events different meaning, would you have ever have had the feeling that you weren't good enough? Mm. Mm-mm. And if you didn't then, would you today? And then I have everybody take a deep breath and say the belief out loud. And whether it's I'm not good enough, money mm. is scarce and hard to get, men are so... Oh, Women have, we'll go in there. Yeah. Yeah. So you say the belief, when you say the belief at the beginning, it feels yucky. So if everybody yeah. says out loud, I'm not good enough. Now say, I'm a monkey. <laughs> so I'm a monkey feels silly. When you say, I'm not good enough, does that feel the same or different? Yeah, it feels everybody different. It feels yeah. Different. Yeah. When you say it at the end, it feels the same. It, it feels, feels the same. Just Isn't that fantastic? And we have beliefs. And, you know, it's getting rid of a belief is not the issue. Why people come to me, Agnes, is because you have a pattern. So there's mm. a pattern of procrastination. And in that pattern, you can eliminate all the beliefs and yeah. the pattern will go away. But you have to know how to find the beliefs you know, and uncover them and know which ones cause which pattern and even to know what the pattern is. Ah. Pattern. Okay. So, so it's like a cluster of cluster of patterns or beliefs? No, no, cluster of beliefs. Cluster of beliefs and yeah. it creates a pattern. Yes. Okay. I yes. see what you're and saying. And by a pattern, yeah. it's something you do or don't do over time. Fear mm. of public speaking is a pattern. There yes. are 11 beliefs and three conditionings that cause Fear of public speaking. You get rid okay. of those, fear of public speaking goes away. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. And we also have a, um, for people who can't do sessions or don't want to do sessions or 
Um, there is a product we have called um, uh, Recreate Your Life. It's, it's uh, on the website, recreateyourlife.com, and it's called Natural Confidence. And it's 19 of the most uh, common self-esteem beliefs. And okay. you do it um, with a recording. Um, and yes, which is the one I did yeah. on your website. And then I recommended your website because it's such a – it's such a fabulous process and Morty's talking it through and you just follow what he says and then you type in a few things. It's brilliant. And that's why I contacted you was because of how fantastic that process was. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. awesome. I'm, I've been doing it for 30 years and I never not in awe. Mm. Hour. So can I ask you, did you and Morty create this together? How did it start? No. Um, Morty was, um, talk about relationships. Morty was married uh, twice before. Yeah. Uh, and um, everything that should have turned out in his life kind of wasn't. And he, he, what, what, one of the things that happened was he was a management consultant, but um, as he says, he was on a spiritual academic quest. So, I'm sorry, spiritual intellectual quest mm-hmm. to find out why people knew what to do and didn't do it. Yeah. He would do, he'd go into um, a, a company and create this brilliant um, plan for them to follow. And then he'd call back and they didn't implement it. Uh. And he asked companies at the time, like the, the big PR companies like Booz Allen and uh, the consulting companies, and they said, we have the same, you know, if you, if you quote us, we'll deny it, but we have the same experience. And he realized that people know that they will live longer if they go to the gym and take care of their bodies, yeah. eat healthily, they don't do it. They, yes. don't, they should wear seat belts, it'll save their lives, they don't do it. Mm. People go into relationships, going in that they know is not good for them. Yeah. And why? So he was on a plane going to get a um, try um, uh, pitch a uh, client, uh, which was the state of California was giving money to get people off homeless, uh, the homeless roster and into the workforce. And um, they were looking for motivational people. And um, he was on the plane and he started downloading like almost like not quite like Neil Donald Walsh, but he just kind of started writing and writing and what he was, was a genius. He was brilliant. And at the end of the plane trip, he had what was the bare bones of this process. And he said, it's people's beliefs. And he was the first people to say that now everybody knows your beliefs cause your behavior. But in those days, no one that mm. people used to say beliefs. You mean like religious beliefs? Like <laughs> what do you mean and so, when, so, what year? What year are we talking, Shelley? When he did oh, that? Oh God! Um, I would say 1980. Lake was little, so 1982, 83. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he went in and he did the process on the people who were interviewing him and they had four other people they were supposed to listen to. They hired him on the spot. Wow. Because he said, if you get homeless people or people, not homeless people on unemployment, yes. Get rid of their beliefs. They will be able to get a job. Yes. Yes. And so that's what we did. And we got the contract and it was, wow. That's how, how rewarding, it, how rewarding. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. that's where it all began. That's where it all began. <clears throat> so did. can I ask you, now that you're doing the work, what kind of, um, you know, what kind of things do people come to you for repeatedly? I've always been doing the work. So yeah. he came back from that trip. Yeah. And, uh, had a friend of ours who happened to be his I think it was the first one was, was his ex-wife. <laughs> was oh. a good, he's a good friend. It's a family. <laughs> um, my kids call her Aunt Orlene. Yeah. Um, and he worked with her on why she wasn't in a relationship. And it was very yeah. funny because she had all these beliefs about marriage is stifling and you have to give up who you are and, you know, um, yeah. 
all kinds of beliefs about marriage and relationships. And when she, he finished working with her, I was just like, wow, that's why I'm on this planet. It just the, wow. the you know we try to train people we're training people mm. and it's very involved you know it's a, it's training mm. I, I went like this and I breathed it in and it was mine it was like what I was put here to do Agnes I can't wow. tell you so Morty created the processes and the courses and um, was was really the the person who would keep looking at growing the business and running the business. And I have, so I've been doing sessions from the beginning. Yeah. Um, and people come to me um, with every imaginable problem that you can think about. Um, uh, and they're all the same. You know, my client in Saudi Arabia has this, well, hers is different. <laughs> because normally I say to somebody, well, what do you believe that has you not able to leave your husband? And she said, well, yeah. <laughs> and it's very different than ours. Yes. But I had a client in, sweet, uh, in um, Syria, and she said to me, um, I want to do business in Dubai, but I'm like, I keep getting scared and I keep not doing it. Mm. And we got rid of the beliefs, and her beliefs came from the same place. She had the same beliefs everybody else did. She got rid of the beliefs, and by the second session, or third session, sorry, by the third session, she had already called Dubai and she was doing business. Wow. So, um, so it's relationships. I yes. can't find a relationship. Mm. I have lousy relationships. I'm defensive in a relationship. Mm. I don't tell the truth. I'm afraid of intimacy. Um, yeah. Uh, I allow myself to be mistreated. Mm. Uh, I don't stand up for myself. Uh, careers, people stay in careers that they're miserable in. I have yeah. one of my favorite clients who I just met for the first time. <laughs> um, on a, I went back east and, um, you know, was miserable. He, he gives me testimonials to this. He never smiled. He was a financial person who sold his business to a big bank and he was going to stay and get his rest of his payout over three years and we got rid of his uh, I think we had a fear of public speaking and then he started working with me and he left his job he just started a um, uh, an e-commerce site that supports local businesses and um, socially conscious businesses mm. and when I get on with him every week he's like this He's oh, happy. Wow. He's just the happiest guy in the world. And mm. um, he smiles and he's not in a suit and tie anymore and he loves his life. Fabulous. So just getting people past the barriers that, you know, I mean, people have coaches and coaches are great. They'll help you build your business. They'll tell you what to do, mm. what not to do. They'll ask you awesome questions. Everybody should have one. But if you have beliefs in the way, it's yeah. going to be hard to take your coach's advice. Yeah. And that's the other thing I just want to say. You know how you take a workshop? We've all done workshops and courses. And, yes. you know, and you take and you go, oh, my God, that was awesome. I took notes and pages of notes. Yeah. Later, where are your notes? Yeah. In a drawer. And yeah. what's changed? Yeah. For most people, unless your beliefs are consistent, Mm. Which is why there are, you know, I think there are people who teach amazing things, you know, teach you how to be successful, teach you how to market online, teach you all kinds of things. And you can't utilize what they teach you because your beliefs are in the way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Shelley, that was why I contacted you because I've got probably, I would say 90% of the people that come to my channel because it's a, a law of attraction manifesting channel where it's mm. success stories, how people broke down the mechanics of how they got where they wanted to go and what processes they used to get there. But the thing is, out of that 90% that comes to the channel, I would say about 85% of those people are coming because they want to find out how to reconnect with a specific person. 
and there are a collection of repetitive beliefs that I see amongst people that want a specific person and that person isn't walking towards them and it's I'm not good enough I don't deserve I'm not worthy I don't matter I'm not important I'm not a priority and I'm second best because often there's a third party involved so I get the well, and I'm really to see yeah. what you can what can you say about that to them yeah well I'm second best probably comes from childhood Yes. Um, it's, you know, if you get, if you are, you know, not at the top of your class and you don't get an A or you're being compared mm. to somebody else or you have a sibling who yes you know, does things better than you, um, you think you're, you know, you conclude I'm second best. Yes. If you're in a sport and you never become number one, mm. if I'm second best. Yeah. The, the beliefs don't generally come from your adult life. And, no. and sometimes, you know, if you have um, something happen to you that's uh, either tragic or a first relationship, you know, maybe somebody dumps you and then you just, consume, mm. <clears throat> you know, men are idiots or you know, women have a lot of beliefs about men. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Men only want one thing. Men yes. dominate. Men have all the power. You know. Yeah. And it's not true. Men are stubborn. Men don't emotionally give. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, I hear this in probably about forty to fifty emails a day. So yeah, it's that thing of seeing those beliefs, and it is like a a collection or a little cluster of beliefs yeah, that we go can... with that particular situation coming at people. And we get rid of, I can get rid of, depending on how you work, between two, two and five beliefs in a session. Oh, great. Oh, well, that, okay. Well, that's where I was going to go next. What is the process? You can do that many. That's fantastic. It depends on the person, you know, if yes. somebody knows yes. the source of it. So if somebody said to me, you know, oh, well, my father cheated on my mother, mm. you know, men can't be trusted is not rocket science. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. men can't be trusted. Or if your father walks out on you when you're little, you mm. might have the belief, I'm not what men want. Yes. Um, you might have the belief, um, uh, clearly I'm not important, or men leave. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I go over, you know, I pull every belief out. And because I'm doing this for 30 years, I don't sit and wait for you to tell me what the beliefs are. I pretty much suggest okay. them. And then we run them through the mm. test. Fantastic. So, okay, if you do, say you do a session, do you do like a group of sessions or people book in for one or how do you, how do you operate? Well, you start with one session and then we get the pattern in the first session and we eliminate generally one to two beliefs in the first session to just get you through the process. And yeah. then yeah, if you need, you have a second or a third session and then we start doing more beliefs in each session. Mm. And depending on, you know, if you're working on conflict, you know, that's generally one, maybe two sessions. Yeah. You know, working on um, fear of public speaking, that's four sessions. Okay. You, but it depends on, you know, mm. how hard it is for you to get through the process. Some people okay. can do six in a session. They just kind of roll through. Roll uh, through. Stop. Okay. And, and how do people know once they've done the work, is it an external result changes? Is that how they know their belief is gone? Well, you know your belief is gone because you can tell you no longer believe it. I mean, I have everybody say something like, um, I believe that Donald Trump is a great president. Yeah. Yeah, some people may believe that, but whatever you believe, most people know exactly what they believe. And they say, yes, I believe that, or no, I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Very few people say, well, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yes, okay. So, okay. Yeah. so when you... A belief, by the way, is a statement about reality that you believe is the truth. So it's yeah. like being pregnant. You either is or you ain't. <laughs> I believe this is true. Yeah. So at the end, when you say the belief, mm. for the most part, it either feels silly or flat. Mm. You know? And if it doesn't feel like, no, I don't, you know, it's like, um, I, always, I, I like this example because I'm sassy and it's a sassy example. Um, if you believed, if you had a spouse 
and you were married for 30 years or with that person for 30 years and you had the belief I can trust my spouse. They would never, ever cheat on me. I believe that with every fiber of my being. Mm. You walk into your bedroom and there's your spouse in bed with another person. <laughs> what would happen to that belief in a nanosecond? Yeah. <clears throat> so I always take people back to, if the belief doesn't go away, did you ever see it? And what and, and what's very cool about this, Agnes, is, and everybody listening, um, when you eliminate, so when you have a belief, you know the little voice in your head that talks to you all day long? It yaks. That little voice will say, don't speak, or, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do this, maybe you should do this. Or, when you get rid of beliefs, like when you get rid of the belief, I'm not important, you're mm -hmm. in a and all of a sudden, somebody says something and you speak. And you don't even realize you're speaking because there's an absence of something. You're not aware of it. You only be aware of the presence of something. And then, you know, somebody, your kid ignores you and you don't get angry. You just say, sweetheart, I don't appreciate being ignored. I don't ignore you. Mm. But because that I'm not important is gone, you don't even realize it. So they'll call, and most people will be aware that there are changes. But sometimes yeah. people will call and I'll say, what'd you notice? And they'll say, and they'll start reflecting. And all of a sudden they'll go, oh my God, I didn't get angry at my kid when she ignored me or I spoke mm. up in the meeting. Mm. So you got to know that your beliefs are gone because the universe, law of attraction. I worked with an out-of-work actor. And he had a lot of money beliefs and actors starve and, you know, all those beliefs. Yeah. So after the first session, this is so cool. Um, God, I, he became a friend and he just passed and we loved him. Aww. Yeah. And he was awesome. And he had all these beliefs and we got rid of a couple of beliefs about money and actors starving and he goes home, and years ago, he did a national commercial, and they started playing it again, and there was this check in the mailbox. He didn't even know they were playing it, and there was a check in the mailbox. <laughs> it's just like very, wow. very law of attraction. <laughs> wow. So the universe just starts responding, you know? Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, if you believe men can't be trusted and men are selfish and men blah 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 yes. who are you going to attract yes yes you can't even see mm. Mm. i once told a story about morty and i it was a very stunning story about how um i once when morty and i were first together i once said you know what this isn't working for me i'm leaving and he um he asked me to consider if I was going to be with him for the rest of my life, um, that I would give up the right to ever question the relationship again. So he would never hurt me. He would never do anything yes. to make me want to leave him. And he would always work on himself. But if I'm in, I'm in. It was his commitment. And I just felt like this moment of total surrender, but in a powerful way because I had chosen to commit. Mm. And the story, it's a long story. But anyway, so I was telling the story and my friend, Kim, had just worked with me on beliefs about men. And she said, I heard you tell that story twice. And I never heard it before. I just heard that. That's a beautiful story. And I, I, I didn't hear it the first two times. She couldn't hear it given her belief. She heard me saying words, wow. but she didn't get it. Yeah. And if I mention a name, she's another one who's been on TV with me and <laughs> tells the world. Mm. So I don't say names. Yes, of course, of course. But, wow, um, wow. Mm. It is, it is. It's like shedding layers of bondage, isn't it? 
Yeah. 100%. Mm. Michelangelo mm. said when they asked him, how did you create the David? And he said, I just took a piece of marble and I carved away everything that wasn't the David. Yes. And that's how I think of my work, Agnes. I sit with people who are magnificent like the David. And we mm. just carve away everything that's not them. Mm. That's a beautiful image. Damn. Beautiful image. Um, let me ask you, because people have asked me this question, is there beliefs that are not, you can't get rid of in your experience? No. So that's the only time very good news get, to everybody. Yeah. The only time you won't get rid of a belief is if you need it to survive. Okay. Okay. And that's why we will always take away the need for that kind of belief before we mm. do. So if, um, you know, the way to survive is to fly under the radar. Yeah. You have to get rid of the belief speaking up is dangerous. Or if I speak up, I'll be hurt or killed or get in trouble. Uh, okay. Or and depending on what country you live in, those are very real. Yeah. I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. And so I would never take away a belief. See, and let me just say this, when you get rid of a belief, like with women who have been raped, if you get rid of the belief uh, men are dangerous and men can't mm. be trusted, mm. you're not going to trust all men. So no. the opposite isn't true. The only difference is you now have a choice mm. to trust or to not trust. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. And I suppose you're more able to see clearly the difference between the two categories of people. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I see. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, good this stuff, stuff is, huh? This stuff fascinates me. It really does. And I really loved when Morty went through that process with Joe Vitale, and that's what got me... A friend of mine actually sent me that series of, I think it's five YouTubes. Oh. That's what got me att attracted to what you do because it was such a great process watching him do it with someone in the chair. Yes. So I'm going to put those YouTubes again under the link of this YouTube that I'm going to upload because that is such a simple belief that got removed quite quickly under our very eyes watching him do it, do the process with him. So yeah, I will put that because it's um, a great example. Mm. So Shelley, do you want to say, is there anything you want to, um, do you want to share with the people what you've got available, what you do, what's there in terms yeah. of products or services so, so they know what you do? Yeah. So um, uh, if you want to experience uh, the process, you can go to recreateyourlife.com. And if you want, after you do uh, eliminate a belief, um, uh, you can choose to buy natural confidence uh, program, uh, yeah. which is, I don't know how much I, I forget. <laughs> uh, but it's not a lot of money. It's very reasonable because my husband wanted his commitment was to have people be free. So yeah. the mission of the Lefko Institute is to um, uh, facilitate people to live life as the unlimited possibility that they are. Mm. Um, and he was committed to that um, more than any, more than making money. Um, and uh, if you want to have a session with me, you can go to Lefko Institute and it's L E F as in Frank K O E Lefko Institute.com. And it says, get a session. You, you can yep. go to getasession.com. Um, uh, and then to book, you just go to bookshelly.com. Okay. Um, and, and I'll put all that in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. So do you do, do you do groups as well? Or do you do, or you work mainly one-on-one? -on -one? It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's okay. a one-on-one -on -one thing. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. And if you're a coach, and you want to be trained, just go to Lefko Institute and you can find out information about getting trained to do this. Um, therapists yeah. find it 
an amazing tool on their tool belt. Mm. Amazing tool. Yeah. As do coaches. I have coaches, yes. I have a couple of coaches who send me their people who they feel are stuck. Mm. And, uh, they're much more coachable, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much for having Oh, look, me. my pleasure. I'm just really, I get really excited about the work you do and I'm actually going to go and explore more. And, um, yeah, I just, I, it's just such a, you know, just resonates. And the people that watch my channel, we talk about all this stuff and in relation to work, money, relationships, health, people are stuck in lots of different areas. So, this information will be really great information for the people that watch this channel. And um, I know that they will come and hop on board and have a look and um, take it further. Workaholism is nothing. Yes. Than, I'm not good enough. I'm not important. But what makes me important are my achievements. Mm. That's the belief that has them constantly having to work no matter you know, they don't take care of their health. They don't go to the gym every new New Year's resolutions. Yes. <laughs> People yes. make New Year's resolutions. Why don't you keep <laughs> New Year's resolutions? Because there are beliefs in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we yeah. were just, I was talking with someone about New Year's resolutions today and it is such, such a, um, like you say, you start something for two or three days or a week and then it just fizzles out. So, Because if yeah. you have you have the belief what makes yeah. me happy are my achievements. You're going to be yeah. at the office, not the gym. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for coming on with me, Shelly. You're welcome. And, um, I really appreciate you and what you do. And it really resonates with me. And um, thank you so much. And I'm going to stop the recording and then I'll talk to you for a minute after. Great. Okay.